Hi, I'm that guy. You may have seen me at that place doing that thing. And I'm really stupid. I'm not a very smart person. Uh, if you see on the doors here in Portugal, a lot of them say, they, it, it's spelled P-U-X-E. And the X in Portuguese is a sh sound. So it's pronounced push. And do you know what happens when you push a door that says push? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> and then your face hits the door. Because push means to pull. I've been living here for four years. I have broken my nose every single year. Four times. Not, I'm not a smart person. I was trying to buy some weed when I first came to Lisbon. Because I like to smoke weed every day and it was really hard to kind of find places where I could get it and then I realized that these guys are selling it in the street you might have met them before hashish cocaine marijuana you probably have heard that you're walking down the street and then in some bushes you just hear hashish cocaine marijuana I'm sure you know these guys so I went and I bought some one time and it was fucking like oregano or herbs or something I'm not a smart guy. And I took it home and I was like, I'm not going to waste 20 euros worth of oregano, right? So I put it on my pizza. It was the best fucking oregano. It was like fresh stuff, you know, it was really good. And so I went back to the guy the next day, because uh, now I've got an oregano guy. You don't want to lose that, right? So I'm there, I'm getting my oregano, and I was like, hey, dude, do you have any paprika? <laughs> She's like, what the fuck is paprika? I don't know what paprika is. And I was like, that's right. Hey, do you have any red cocaine? <laughs> of course I have the red cocaine. Very exotic cocaine. So you should try red cocaine on your eggs. Um, it adds a little color. It's just, it's really good. It's just, I'm really stupid though, but I want to like get smarter, like learn more, especially now that I'm in Europe, because there's so much history in Europe, like there's so much to learn and, and there's so many people that are from all these different places and like there's a lot to learn. Like I have a friend, she's from one of those Eastern European countries that's not part of Russia yet. I, there's so many, I always forget the name. Oh gosh, but I don't, it'll come to me. But she was telling me this story about Caesar, Julius Caesar. And he went out and uh, he conquered an orgy. And after he conquered the orgy, he sent a message back to the Senate. And all it said was, I came, I came, I came. <laughs> Fucking show off, right? Like, it's incredible. Trying to, yeah, trying to keep educating myself. Video, I was watching a documentary on Queen Victoria's menstrual cycle. <laughs> and I'm not usually into period pieces. <laughs> it was a bloody good show, it was so good. <laughs> Very educational. I like quotes, political quotes. There's, uh, there's all these, I was, I was looking up all these quotes. There's a lot of these random French dudes that have all these political quotes. Like, I don't know what that's all of it's like. They think they revolutionized politics or something, but it's just, you know, French people are arrogant. And that's just how, how it seems. And I was listening to this one quote and it was, it just blew me away. Cause it goes like every government or every country gets the government that it deserves or every country gets the leadership that it deserves. And that resonated so hard with me right now because I'm American and that's one of the best examples of that quote in action right now. And it's like, it's so embarrassing, you know, cause like my president is constantly on Twitter and it's just, oh God, nobody uses Twitter anymore, dude. Like, get a fucking Instagram, please. Grandpa, come on. So that's been, uh, that's been really troubling. And it's like, it's hard to talk with Americans about politics because a lot of them don't even realize the, the history of their own country. 
Like, they think America has been dropping ice cream and teddy bears on countries for the past 80 years, and they don't understand why people might be, you know, upset with the country. They have, they have no clue. Like, what are they lactose intolerant? Like, these third world countries are just not appreciated? Those are good fucking teddy bears, man. Beanie Babies and shit, too. They might be valuable one day. That's a really old joke. So it's, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's wild, and you know, I think they really need to uh, put some like warnings and stuff as well now, because it's, it's like, so like, I think, I think when you're flying into the USA, they should have just a quick message from the pilot, he comes on, he says, this is your captain speaking, we're gonna be entering the airspace of the United States of America. There's gonna be a little trumpulence as we <laughs> enter into this area. You're going to want to make sure that you stay seated, have your seatbelt tight, hide your pussy. It's going to get a little bumpy. But it's not, it's not just the USA. There's a lot of this shit happening all over the world. Um, it's, it's one of the best examples, but this shit happens all. Like, people keep voting these power-hungry assholes into these powerful positions, and surprise, surprise, they abuse it. So I'm trying to like be the change that I want to see. And I'm totally changing up my strategy for the next election. I'm only going to vote for people that don't want to be in power. And so I was talking to my friend Bob. And I was like, hey, Bob, you're a really good guy. Like, why don't you become president? You know, think about that. And he was like, no, I don't want to do that. That's a terrible idea. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm voting for Bob. I just write Bob in for everything now. President, vice president, secretary. I could go through everything, but I'm not going to. So that's just, um, I don't know. And it's, it's tough because it's, you get disappointed so often, especially with all this interconnectedness with the internet, social, you learn about so many bad things happening so fast and I've just gotten so used to, to the disappointment and like I'm even becoming like attracted to disappointment. Like I find disappointment attractive at this point. Like I don't even, I don't even use porn to masturbate anymore. <laughs> I just look into a mirror and I'm just like, oh yeah! I yell when I'm masturbating because I don't I don't like to just be silent masturbating by myself. That's really weird. So that's yeah, like I, that's all I need. And it's always really awkward when you're wiping the cum off the mirror because it looks like you're cleaning cum off of your own face, and I'm not used to that. It's a lot of things I'm getting used to. So um, yeah, so we have about what I have 15 more minutes of penis jokes. <laughs> Here. Do you like your penis jokes long or short? Size matters. Size matters? Okay. Well, some, some, <laughs> who are you sitting with? I hope that he <laughs> We all know who the Jumbotron is over there. <laughs> so, that is, uh, how, how are we doing on time? Good. Good, okay. Um, so I hope you all are having a, a really good time. I'm uh, a little under the weather. I have a chest infection, and, uh, and it sucks, and I hate it. And I went to the hospital uh, yesterday, but it was worth it because I just want to tell you what my hospital trip was like yesterday. I got in the Uber, and the Uber driver could see that I was like shaking and just having a really bad time, and, uh, and, and my chest was beating and I was like, we need to go. And this guy just decides to take on the role of a paramedic. And he is swerving through lanes, he is honking the horn. And we get to the hospital and he's like, do, do you want me to come in and help you? And I was like, man, you've done so much. You don't need to do anything else. And he's like, no, we're going in. So he takes me into the, the, um, the, the counter area and like there's other people in line and he starts banging on the window and he's like, hey, don't you see that guy? He's fucking dying. And I'm like, that was way more than I needed. I didn't, I didn't need that. 
And so they actually um, got me up and, and they set up all of my info and everything. And then they were like, just go through those doors into the triage area and make your first left. And the guy was like, do you want me to come with you? And I was like, that looks like a security area. Like, I don't think that you need to come with me there. And he's like, no, it's fine. We're going to go. So <laughs> this is 100% true. This is not even a joke. This is my life. So we go into the triage area, and the place they told me to go to was occupied by a nice nurse lady and another sick person. And my driver goes, hey! Hey! And he walks into the cubicle where they're having a private medical discussion, and he's like, don't you see that guy is sick? And I'm like, oh, fuck. Because I follow the rules, like, you don't fuck with service people, right? Like, you don't fuck with people that are making your food. You don't fuck with people that are going to be helping you when you're sick. And I'm standing there the whole time like, I'm going to fucking die on this floor while this dude is yelling at people. So that wasn't enough. He goes around to the other room and he sees a doctor just chilling there. And that made this guy irate. <laughs> What are you doing just sitting there? Don't you see that guy is sick? Like, get up. So the doctor gets up. And now the doctor and the Uber driver are face to face, just talking shit to each other. And I'm still standing there like, I need some fucking help. So they're yelling at each other. And the doctor's like, go to the waiting room. And I'm like, all right, fine. I'll go die in the waiting room. And they're yelling at each other for a good, good four minutes until they finally get the Uber driver out. And the doctor comes over to me and he's like, what's that guy's problem? I was like, I don't know. I don't know him. I apologize to every single person, even patients. I, they were just walking by and I'm like, I'm so sorry if you heard any of that. Um, so I gave him five stars and I tipped him 14 euros. I was like, that fucking uber experience I've ever had. Like, that guy really went to bat for me when I needed it. And I think that's why I was able to survive and be here with you all tonight. So thank you so much. That's my time. Enjoy the rest of the show.